Well, welcome to one of the most important panels, in my opinion, uh, because it's really going to be a great conversation around where's the revenue stream right. in this new technology called ATSC 3.0. And, and Dell, I have to tell you, having been at the front of our booth, um, we, that's what people are asking. Sure. That's what people are asking. So before I actually start diving into this with Dell, uh, for those who don't know who Dell is and, and why, we have the SVP and CTO of Sinclair Broadcast Television Group up here. Um, it's because you have run so many different departments, you've been so integral to the standard, and yeah. now even you're, you're looking at operations and engineering and, and how technology works with business development that you really have been looped in to the money side for some time. Yeah, I, you know, I've been with Sinclair, I guess, 46 years. 46 years, okay. But uh, uh, my, my boss, Dave Smith, um, taught me a long time ago that any technology has to have, have a revenue stream mm -hmm. or a potential revenue stream. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, technology without a revenue stream is just technology. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so it's very important for us... Uh, and I, I can speak for Sinclair. We, we, uh, we recognized a long time ago that the world was going moving to mobile, handheld, digital, um, and we also recognized that we, in order for us to do that, we would have to have a new standard. Right. And so we, we started working on uh, Mark Aiken, uh, started working on and Kevin Gage and others. Met several others, but primarily Mark and uh, and uh, started working on ATSC 3.0 about five or six years yeah. ago, a long time ago. And the first hurdle was to convince the rest of the industry that we needed a new standard, mm -hmm. which was was a pretty big hurdle. Yeah, no, I, th I remember. I remember. Because uh, and and one of the ways to do that was to highlight the possibilities of new revenue streams and, and, and new revenue streams as, as they apply to a digital IP environment for over the air, mm -hmm. which was totally different than the current model of ATSC 1.0, which is, you know, buy a spot, see a spot, run a spot, bill a spot. Right, right. right. Very traditional. Very so the other stuff must have seemed like science fiction right. at the time. And so, and so I think what helped propel the standard is over the last five, six, seven years, and you know this, this dynamic shift in ad dollars mm -hmm. over to digital and away from traditional media. And so I think as all of our, as our industry, as the TV industry, started to witness that and experience that. Mm -hmm. I think people first realized they need to ramp up their digital, the digital components of their, their, mm -hmm. their companies. And, and that's number one. And number two, start to look around for ways that over, traditional over-the-air television companies could take advantage of this digital, of these digital, this digital ad dollar shift into digital. And so, you know, we, we obviously were aware of that. And, um, and so that has driven our strategy in terms of what, where we see 3.0. Not everybody sees 3.0 the same, obviously. Right. But, uh, but for Sinclair, we have this, we have a mobile first um, approach. But backing up from that, um, what, what really matters, the, the question you have to ask yourself is, as a, as a, as a, a CTO, um, the first question I ask, having worked for David Smith for 47 years, right. 46 years, is, okay, how can we make money at how this? How do we make money? How do we make money at this? Mm -hmm. and, and what are the possibilities? And, um, and so in, a, in the construct, you know, talking to Mark Aiken, talking to David and, and others in our company a long time ago, is you have to, in 3.0, you have to 
get rid of this notion that ATSC 3.0 is television. Because you've used the word digital a lot. That's it. Okay, so define digital. So for, for, for me, I think, and for Sinclair, digital is, digital is any content that's delivered over an IP stream. Okay, so, so then you're talking about it could be a pure digital website that gets it downloaded. Is. It could be an app. It could be digital video. Right. Any content that is delivered via an IP stream. Okay. And, and the content, the real question is, what's the definition of content? I know. Okay. Right? We're not so, going to get too esoteric, I promise. Yeah. Um, but you're right, because if, if this is one of the things that ATSC affords us, which is to redefine... That's exactly right. ...what our, our relationship and engagement is with the consumer. You said mobile first, but is it really digital first? Because digital is... Well, di digital is a given. Digital is a given. I okay. mean, it's, it, IP is a given. I mean, we're... We're, we are, in terms of distribution, we're in an IP world. Yes. Maybe not quite yet an IP world in production, mm -hmm. but in terms of distribution, whether you distribute OTT or you distribute a website, it's all done, it's all done with IP. So you, you did talk about, though, how we as an industry have been seeing right. the, the shift of ad dollars right. over to the digital platforms, right? right? Whether that's that's more the static, the Google-esque, um, or the digital video, right. right? Embedded in YouTube. So was that really kind of the impetus of the revenue? When David asked you the question, Dell, how are we going to make money? Did you say, I'm going to Oh, Dave gonna... already knew how he was going to make money. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, 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 but I, mean, it, I want to go get those dollars yeah. in, a, in a similar model? Well, it is, and, and it's, and so, The, the technology that we use, and you've heard me say this before, the technology we use to run our business is Stone Age. Yes. <laughs> it's hammer, chisel, stone tablet, right? Uh, when you look, and that's, that's over the air television today, in terms of how we deal with our agencies mm -hmm. and, and how we deal with advertisers. There's, there is no two-way interaction. It's, very, it's, 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 a, it's an area, it's a walled garden society. And if you're in the wall, you can do business within that piece of the wall. Okay. If, you're, if you're in somebody else's wall, mm -hmm. then you can do business in that wall. But don't try, if you're going to cross walls, you're going to be, you know, take your piece of paper, <laughs> wrap it in a rock, <laughs> and, throw and throw it over it the over. wall. <laughs> But, but it's, it's, it's really a very serious issue for us. And, and it's one that we have to solve tomorrow. Because it is, make no mistake, while ATSC 3.0 <clears throat> will afford us many new opportunities to make money, and I'll get to that in a second, our big cash register today is ATSC 1.0. Correct. And Correct. we cannot we cannot short ATSC 1.0 for what we need to do in 3.0. We have to do both. You have to do both. So what is the readiness of the advertisers to do both? You talk about the walled oh. garden, and right now we even struggle oh. having agencies automatically send just copy oh. to it's, us, right? I mean, so that, and that costs us money if we make mistakes. Yeah. and Ar people. Archaic would be a nice word. Well, that goes back to your chisel, That's right. right? We're chiseling, we're so, faxing Stone Age chisels. So, so campaign what, what it really does is you have to go to the root of our business. And I, I'll make a statement, it's probably a little wild, but everything you see here, every company you see here, just look around. If advertisers, if Procter & Gamble didn't want to sell soap, none of this would be here. That's true. If advertisers didn't spend their money with media, I don't care if you're an OTT, you're an OTA, you're internet only, you're whatever. If advertisers didn't or couldn't easily spend their money, none of this would be here. We wouldn't be here. What's our business? Our business is based on selling advertising. Right, right. So if you go, if you go to the advertiser, ERS, 
So you have the advertisers, the agencies, and the distribution, right? So what, what we're seeing today, or at least what I believe I'm seeing today, is that advertisers are not very thrilled, in most cases, with the, how the agencies are spending their money. So when you have P&G shifting money at, back out of digital. Right. Because they're really, they're not happy about their soap commercial mm -hmm. showing up next to uh, uh, you know, some content that is inappropriate. Correct. And so I think where we all need to go is very digital, and that is, and even the digital guys don't do this, I don't believe, and that is categorize the content. Mm -hmm. Make that content available to the agency easily mm -hmm. in a transactional way, and then have the advertiser have the ability to associate their their ads, their copy, their ads, with whatever the content is. So if it's a cooking show, mm -hmm. you know we do we do lifestyle shows in all almost all of our markets. So if it's a cooking segment. All clad may want to sell pots and pans. Right. But Purina is not going to sell, you know, you don't, you know maybe they don't want to be next to uh, a do-it-yourself, how to build a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So You'd be less likely to watch that ad. Okay, but, but now we're talking about the core business, That's which is business. You're, you're saying is still going to be advertising. Exactly. Okay. But because ATSC 3.0 right. is going to open up this new digital first right. way of reaching viewers. Right. That means you're going to now be, in essence, balancing between those two walled kingdoms, one called linear television ad dollars and right. one digital right. dollars. And so uh, we were at a meeting of, I don't know, a month or so ago, two months ago, and a lot of agencies are represented. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I... We, Sinclair, I made an assumption a while back that agencies and advertisers would want to buy audience rather than a rating point. Well, we talk about it all the time. Talk about it right? all the time. We get Question. to audience. Get to audience. Yeah. But talk is talk. And so I asked a question, a very simple question. I said, how many agencies would, would buy our digital products across our product line, our digital products and our, our, our audiences mm -hmm. in linear television. Mm -hmm. If we if we can quantify if we could do it. If we can quantify yeah. it, number one and number two, if if we can provide the the uh, the data and then if if we can provide the method methodology to be able to buy across both mm -hmm. entities. And and Almost, I, I think every one of them were very enthusiastic about doing that because they should be. Yeah. Because I think advertisers want to buy audience. They don't want to, you know, they don't necessarily want to just put their ads in a pool and have them appear wherever Google says they're going to appear. Right. right. Which is kind of the way DFP works, right? Right. right. And so the, the, the beautiful thing about 3.0 is now. It's all digital, and there's dynamic ad insertion, and what I what I call dynamic content, the ability to do dynamic content insertion. Mm -hmm. So if you if you are um, you know if you're a Ford truck driver, mm -hmm. you know we can deliver you content that is associated with Ford trucks. Mm -hmm. If you're a, a VW bug driver, then we can deliver you content that is associated with, with, that, uh, with, that, with that product. So we, we're really only at the very beginning of, of what's going to happen okay. in this industry. It's, it's really exciting when you think about it. And so ATS 3.0, ATSC 3.0, and, and you know, I was at a breakfast Monday morning, and you know, uh, there's still a lot of skeptical people, mm -hmm. and they have every mm -hmm. right to be skeptical. And, and there's still challenges out there that we need to overcome, but our view is, is we have no choice but to do this. This is our future. Well, this is transformative, right? Right. Because again, now you actually have access to 
a bi-directional right. connection with your viewer. We know um, our audience. Our and audience you know your audience. Right. You know your audience. So let's talk about the audience because right. ATSC 3.0, if it's going to have all these great services, still requires the viewer, the consumer, right. to have a new device. That's right. That's exactly right. So where... Well, it, it's, it's correct to, to a degree. And the way it's correct is that if, if you're at home and you have a Wi-Fi, you have a Wi-Fi, does everybody have a Wi-Fi system at home, right? Everybody has pretty much Wi-Fi. We hope so. <laughs> so if, if, if your phone is on that Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and, and, and let's say you had a gateway device, which is, you know, could be like an Amazon Fire. Right, or, right. Or you had a gateway device with chips in it and an antenna. By the way, ATSC 3.0 is eminently receivable because it's COFDN. It's not 8VSB. It's not a single carrier. It's multiple carriers. Don't want to get into weeds. I was going to say, no, no, remember, this but, is the money talk. This but, is the money talk. Yeah, Save so, the tech talk. Uh, but because it is easily received, our, its ability to be placed in various parts of your home mm -hmm. is, is it's enhanced. You can receive the TV signal. So are you so are you worried so, no. about consumer adoption? Because it sounds like you're saying no. Well, I mean, I think you always, whenever you require a change, you're always worried about it. But also be aware that Korea has adopted ATSC 3.0. Mm -hmm. So so LG and Samsung, I suspect, will be building ATSC 3.0 chips into the TV sets. They already are. I yeah. know, we know that. And so. In terms of distribution, like anything, just like HD, right? I was going to say, we both lived through that, right? Yeah. We, we lived through the ATSC 1.0 where it was the big, now you have to go tell consumers. Everybody expects a light switch. Why to not. go by? It's, it's a fader. Not. Okay. It's if, a fader. If it's a fader, then what's going to entice the consumers? Because advertisers want to get to those consumers. They do. You're going to have a, a way for advertisers to get to them. Why is the consumer saying, I'm going to make my gateway ATSC 3.0. Yeah, it's it, it's about it's again. Then you go back to this this saying that everybody uses is it's about it's about the content. About the content. So so what can we offer on 3.0 that we can offer we cannot offer on 1.0, mm -hmm. right? So what would cause you to get a a box? So if that box had chips in it, 3.0 chips in it, it had storage in it, right? It was, you could connect it to your Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And if your t smart TV is connected to the Wi-Fi, guess what? That's the receiver. That's the receiver. Yeah. So, you're, so now, every device in that Wi-Fi mm -hmm. environment in your house can receive 3.0 vis-a-vis -vis the gateway. So are you thinking... Or, or, a, or a dongle, or there's, uh, there's several different... There's a couple of different ways to actually do it. But you're saying it's not prohibitive. No. Because, yeah. again, of the, the technology. So what are the services so, that you're thinking well, about in the contact? So what would, what would cause you as a consumer to want to connect to a 3.0 environment? Mm -hmm. Well, one could be a skinny bundle. Mm -hmm. So we could deliver 25 channels of 720p in, in an ATS, the 3.0 signal. And, and there's a certain, there's a certain um, attribute to ATSC 3.0 that allows you to link channels together. Hmm. So it doesn't matter. You won't know what channel. Channels are, are a thing of the past. It's just an RF delivery me mechanism. Okay. So you could link two or three ATSC 3.0 channels together mm -hmm. in a marketplace, and that's why we created Spectrum Co. Right. With, with uh, Nexstar and, and, and some mm -hmm. others. You could deliver 50, 75 megabits of IP signal seamlessly across a channel in a, in a DMA. And in that, you could have a skinny bundle. You could, have, you, you could do a music service okay. that you could also receive in your car, by the way. Uh-huh. You, know, um, you know, 30, 40 channels of music. Uh, we can also deliver um, code doesn't have to be video. It doesn't have to be audio. Now you're just talking data. Data. Uh, two years ago, we had, uh, we had a large CDN in our demo suite up at the Wynn. And, and the, the concept of a CDN is to push content to the edge. Right. 
Well, you can't get any further to the edge than your living room. So if you're, if you're a supplier, if you're a CDN, it, may, might, it might make sense to take all the content that you know that gets used all the time, push that out one o'clock in the morning, push it into a, a, a device with storage mm -hmm. that then someone can use the next day. Okay, but now this is starting to sound like you're gonna move into a subscription. Model. You're talking oh, skinny bundle. You're yeah. talking music That's services, right. which to me means Spotify. Premium service. Course. Premium service. Premium services. Sure. Doing updates. For one of the, one of the concerns about, and, and, and it's a it's a it, it is a legitimate concern, uh, was brought up the other morning was uh, because it's IP, perhaps it could easily be stolen. Ah. And so and so as part of 3.0, there has to be. A, um, a robust um, way to prevent that. Oh, so it's a could be a subscription service mm -hmm. that you sign into, like your, your smart TV. Right? Yeah. You sign into your smart If you have a smart TV, you sign into mm -hmm. it. But when you sign into it, you, you give up a, just a little bit of information. Right. Just not a lot, but a it, little it bit. It knows Sarah. It knows Sarah. It knows knows Sarah and knows a little bit about my household. And so, and so that could you know, that process could be part of a free-to-air subscription service. So in other words, you're subscribing, but we're not charging you for it. Okay. But we know who you are. We know you have a TV set. Mm -hmm. We know you watch us on your, your, your device okay. or your pad, your iPad or your... your All right, device. so now we're talking about maybe it's not a subscription as a revenue stream. But it but, could be. But, but it, it could, could be. be. But now, because you have that data about me right. as a viewer... Right. I'm going to be part of that audience. We're coming full circle That's to right. audience. So for the first time, broadcasters will be able to communicate directly to their audience. And we can get, we can get that data. And so it can be enhanced by Nielsen, obviously. It can be enhanced by Comscore. It can be enhanced by Experian. It can be enhanced by Cantor. Mm -hmm. You know, you just go down and tick off the list. Mm -hmm. now, you can build, now you can build audience data that's targeted. Mm -hmm. and so it doesn't know Sarah, it knows it knows that you're 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 female mm -hmm. and and you you know because you of Experian it knows what income bracket you're in because right. it looks at your credit card stuff. Yeah. But well, this that, is a, okay now you're you, but, but so you asked about money. Yeah. So so it gets back to again to go back to the root of our business is advertisers want to want to sell their product. Right. My job at a TV station is to make is, is to help make the person who watches my news go to the car dealer the next day and buy a car, and and that whole cycle needs to be tracked now. Mm -hmm. Advertisers are not willing, or, or won't be willing in the future, to just throw the dark. They want to know the result. They want to be able to see the results. Well, now you're because again, that's what digital digital has been able to do without. That's right. Let's not go down the brown safety route or any of yeah, those. Yeah. But digital can. That's exactly right. Give the attribute of what happened. Now, now I ask. I'll ask you the question. Now, now I ask the audience. I always ask this question. I love asking it. How many people in the audience actually watch a commercial on their cell phone? And how many people who, like me, sit there with their finger, and as soon as the skip ad spot comes up, hit You hit the, the skip, skip ad. You hit the skip ad. Yeah. Don't answer that. But, <laughs> but everyone I talk to says, you know what? My finger's there, and as soon as I can, I hit that ad. And it's, it's, it's mostly because I think the, the ad is not as, as friendly to the content. I'll go back to my pots and pans. Okay. If you're watching a cooking show... You would be interested in McCormick spices. Right. You would be interested in all clad or some newfangled, right. you know, way to Dutch oven or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. You, you want, people are more inclined to watch ads that relate to the content. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing an episode, if you're doing a, a piece on puppy dogs and kitty cats, Purina might be more interested in that piece of content mm -hmm. than they would if it was you know, how to build a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're that's going back. very sophisticated stuff. I, that's exactly where I was going to go because now, I mean, we're, I want to remind everyone, this is the CTO 
right? And here we are having this very big business conversation, but there has to be a connection not back to ATSC 3.0, which I'm sure has some uh, major changes from your infrastructure, but talk to me about from your, your business system. Right. So what, what's going to change there? Because now you're talking audience and data and selling like digital and, and getting advertisers targeting. And, and, and as you know, that's, that's a subject that is extremely near and dear to my heart. To your heart. <laughs> uh, we have to change the environment. We have to take the stone tablets and the chisels and the hammers away. And our, at Sinclair, we've, we've, you know, we, call, we don't call our salespeople salespeople anymore because they're really marketing consultants. You need to change that environment. You know, I'm not just going to walk in and pull my order pad out anymore and say, oh, you want a spot in the news tonight? Yes. It's, it's not about that. It is about helping clients complete that loop mm -hmm. of moving people from their sofa yep. or their wherever yep. into the front door of their business. Mm -hmm. And if you, talk to, you know, if you talk to people, part of that is AI will, take, will, will, will play a role in that. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, absolutely. We're talking about millions of transactions a day. Yeah. And, and no human being, the, the traditional traffic department, will also have to change. Mm -hmm. No human being will be able to keep track of all that. And copy? Oh, my gosh. Copy? You know, because you know, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a piece of copy that's aimed at this segment of the audience, a piece of copy aimed at that segment of the audience, a piece of copy that's aimed at that segment of the audience, mm -hmm. and it actually could be the same content. Right. Right? Right. Could be the news. It could, it could be news with just different voiceover copy right. that's actually going to target. And, and so in every DMA, in every television DMA, that I, we're, we're in a lot of them, mm -hmm. they're using Washington, D.C., for example, mm -hmm. you know, that Washington DC DMA or New York, you know, look at look at New York. You're not going to drive from Long Island to Staten Island to buy a car. No, no, right? No. So the, our, our our friends at the cable company they have zoned advertising. Right. Why can't we have zoned advertising? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that doesn't require AI. It just requires dynamic ad insertion, right? Based on a geographic area, mm -hmm. which 3.0 can accomplish. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, in terms of uh, a definitive path, I think there are a few. Mm -hmm. But what's more exciting is that is is what we don't know. It's it's this IP delivery system that will allow someone much younger than me mm -hmm. to come in and say, "Guess what? We can do this." Mm -hmm. And you're going to scratch your head and go, "You're right. We can do that." Well, because, because it's IP. Yes, because it's IP. So. So what's interesting, though, is, is we're talking about an incredibly robust transformation yeah, across the whole industry. every function, every function in, the in industry. each part of the industry and the ecosystem so that we can actually harness a more engaging relationship right. with your viewers, but then also your advertisers. That's right. complex. Well, it is, except that everyone understands that we have to make this move. You don't really have to convince the advertisers and you don't have to convince the agencies that we need, we need more efficient delivery mechanisms. Mm -hmm. What you have to convince them of is to drop their walled gardens. That's the hardest part. Drop the walled gardens. Drop the walled gardens. And we're in, start to. We're in an environment where if you're, not, if you're not building on microservices and allowing APIs to come in and out, best of breed, mm -hmm. then it's only a matter of time, I think, in my opinion. It's only a matter of time before that walled garden will start to crumble. Well, now the technology is enabling the business Absolutely. change again. Absolutely. And, and you've obviously, at Sinclair, put a, a, a big bet yeah. on the fact that ATSC 3.0 is not we'll, only going to we'll transform put our your chips business. Black. Yes, you did. Yes, or you red. did. Or red. Which one, yeah, Whichever which one is it? Um, but that it's going to make more money, right. but more money through different ways of reaching consumers, different types of advertising, right. and now subscription and or different relationships with service right. providers. So look at ATSC, I don't want to, I don't want, ATSC 1.0 is not an orphan here. 
uh, it's still a very robust business. And if there's any broadcasters out there, you know, that's how we make our money today. Yeah. So there's a company called Sorensen Media, and I, I wanted to talk about that for a second because Sorensen Media uses automatic content recognition and smart TVs to, to be able to identify the, the audience, their audience. And um, I think the number is something like 20 million smart TVs, 20 to 25 million right. smart TVs, which is a pretty good sample size. For no, the that's US. pretty good. That's Not pretty bad. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but so we work with Sorensen to, to, to put training wheels on this digital dynamic ad insertion. Mm -hmm. And, and because it's, it's, it's not just the technical ability to insert an ad dynamically. The trick is the back office changes you have to make to traffic. Oh, they're significant. To right. sales. Yeah. And how are you going to sell it? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to sell it to? It, are the agencies ready to actually buy it? Mm -hmm. Not everyone is. And so... It's, it's, it's kind of a, it's really a set of training wheels for us to, to understand the process, the whole process. And so it's, it's, it's very exciting. And we can look at a, we can look at us in a, in a DMA and, and we can see who is watching what newscast. And if, if, and then because you have the rundown, your news rundown, if you have a if you have the, the weather person come on and all of all of a sudden you see this big dip people tuning out your weather person it tells you something yes you're either not delivering the weather correctly or they don't like the person right <laughs> but there you can see those trends mm -hmm. you know you can and you can see uh, the tune in or tune out based around commercials you're you're talking though about and that's one dot out Right, today, and, and training wheels, right? So exactly. give, me, give me some crystal ball here, Dell. You, you're playing with some of the new revenue models in 1.0 through partners right. like Sorensen. Um, but with 3.0, which is all over this show, right. and, and you're doing testing and have been testing right. in Baltimore. Well, it's not just Sinclair, it's Pearl. Right. And, and I, I would say... And NAB. Yeah, NAB. I, I think all... I don't want to make a blanket statement, but I think most of the major broadcast companies understand how important this is. And all of us together are cooperating, and we will need to cooperate in order to deploy this. Because also you need to understand we're in a repack. Our spectrum is getting shrunk. Right, right. So I'll tell you what I tell all the, all the encoder manufacturers is, is keep... Keep working on MPEG-2 efficiency because without increased efficiency in MPEG-2, we, we can't create space for 3.0. You can't, you can't actually then harness new services by we, putting them into what you already we have. have to, we have to take the spectrum for 3.0 in the Army, what we used to call out of hide. Uh, we have to take it from ourselves mm -hmm. and we have to cooperate in a DMA and with our, with our competitors uh -huh. on a technical basis, saying, how can we create spectrum for 3.0? Okay. And, and I think everybody is, is kind of tuned into that. So, so, Crystal Ball, when do you think we start to see these tests start to move into real business services? I, I always hate to give a timeline, but I'll, I'll answer that by saying we are we are just beginning to repack, which is about a three-year period. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're now shrinking our spectrum. Okay. That is a major undertaking. Changing right. channels, oh, yeah. changing antennas, changing transmitters, change, it's, it's huge. That requires a lot of effort. However, concurrently with that effort, we're also looking at how we're going to deploy 3.0. If we, if we didn't have the repack, I would give you an answer much sooner. But since we do have the repack, it's not going to be much later. It'll be just a tad bit later. Okay. So I would say in the next two to four years, you'll start to see 
markets being lit up. And by the way, another attribute of 3.0 is, a, is its ability to be used as a single frequency network. So we can have, we can have one stick on a tall tower, but we can have you know, three, four, five, six, seven, ten sticks on smaller towers. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that on the same channel mm. and or channels, and that then raises the, the, the level of the signal level up in, in the area. And when you do rate, when you have the effect of raising the signal level and the carrier to noise, it allows you more bandwidth. Okay. Or the serve the type for the, of service. for the service or, yes. or for the bundles or exactly. for that community or for the dynamic content insertion. Right. So you're you're saying in the two to four year range. But to get there, we're, we're changing with the repack. Changing, we're changing the business ad, we're changing We're ad retrading ad our AEs. Right. We're, we're changing our ad management. <laughs> the ad management we're, platforms. It's, it's, it's a huge undertaking. But if we don't do it, what are the, what's the alternative? Yeah. The alternative is, you know, salesperson goes out, knocks on the door and says, you know, I can run your spot in our news tonight, which is what we've done for 60 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know that that's it's sustainable. Probably. I mean, it is, but it's... Well, it's, but, but it, not with growth. And I think growth. that what, what your company and other right. companies believe is with this new technology, there is revenue growth. It's right. not just survival, right? Now we're not just talking about how to exactly. survive. We're talking about how to thrive with all those new business services you described earlier. Right. So it's it's it really is... Um, First, it is a game changer, a lot of balls in the air right now, but if we, if we don't keep picking those balls up, yeah. keeping them in the air, um, we, we won't have the ability, Sarah, to sell across all of our platforms. Yeah. And so, so an agency can come in and say, I, wanna, I, want, I want people who are gonna buy four trucks and, uh, and, and shop at Lowe's and buy power tools. Right. Yeah. Where I want to, I want, and and I don't care how you reach them, whether it's, you know, in your in your uh, OTT product, or it's in your over the air product, or it's in your your website, uh, or your app. It, it shouldn't matter if I can deliver you that audience. That should that should be all that matters. And by the way, the cost per thousand goes up based on the your ability to deliver that that audience. Oh, you know we're huge proponents of that. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. uh, we, we, we have to be in that business. We cannot not be in that business. Well, I think that it's it's been a really fun journey to yeah. see Sinclair lead the way. I well, think I, that I, I, even how we're partnering yes. to make some of the business yeah. changes uh, so that you can capture that revenue has been a fun journey so far. And, and um, by the way, it's, it's you know, I, I, I'm a Sinclair guy for 47 years and I get that, but it's, it, for me it's exciting to see all, all of our broadcaster community understand the need and, the, and, and recognize the opportunity for 3.0. Yeah. And, and even though, you know, we've been beating the drum for a while and, and it, it really is a, it, it is a cooperative effort amongst all the broadcasters. And, and, and I, think it, I think everyone needs to be recognized for seeing over that hill to what's happening, going to, going to happen, seeing, seeing and trying to future. prepare today yeah. for what's going to happen to, yeah. to us tomorrow. I want to open it up and see if there are any questions um, while we have you here. Yeah, I'll go first to make it interesting. Um, you mentioned uh, subscription services. Uh, were you referring to sort of linear subscription services or on demand, sort of like Netflix versus, for example, Sling TV? You know, I, th I think conditional access allows all of that. So if, if company X who provides premium content comes to us and says, we would like, we would like to distribute some of our content and by the way, not every house is connected to, uh, to uh, uh, a high bandwidth internet connection. In fact, uh, you know, if you look at Pew, the Pew survey, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it's a little old, it was done in, in 2016. 
Only 67% of the U.S. households have bandwidth that is 25 megabits or higher. So think about that. That's one third of your audience in the DMA is, is not OTT capable. So if, if one of those premium services said, you know what, we want to offer a service that is not delivered vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the traditional internet, but maybe you're connected with ADS or DSL that's only a couple of megabits um, or through, through a, a hotspot in, on your phone or whatever. We could, in, in that CDN model, we could deliver that high premium content. We can, we can dribble that into that storage and, and, or we could stream it, you know, one or the other, but, uh, and, and allow those services. So, you know, for a premium channel who wants to get, who, want, who wants to get their data to, let's say a car, you're driving in your car. You know, we have a backseat entertainment system, you know, because a car is a big moving computer these days. You know, so gone are the days when you can go to set the timing on your car, right? You gotta have a, you gotta have a degree in computer technology to do it today, but, but delivering content to cars in a, in a conditional access mode. And we've, we've had, uh, we've even had discussions with car companies about your firmware in your car. So if you want to upgrade your firmware, what do you got to do today? Go to the dealer, they plug into your, they reach under your dash, plug in and update your firmware. We could deliver that while your car is sitting in the garage overnight. So I think the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are, yes, we are planning on doing those types of services. Um, and I think that's where the transmission standard right. has, it's almost like an infinite number of new revenue opportunities well, like based on. Like I said, I, you know, there's probably some, there are probably a bunch of 22-year-old young people out there who have totally different visions of how to, do, how to use this service. And, and, and I will be surprised when they start popping up. Or even what the content is. Another question. Yeah, yeah the 25 megabit information is a good analogy, but that's the FCC definition of broadband versus some of the people below 25 still get internet from, let's say, their cable provider but it's not the official definition of uh, right. broadband. Now, of the remaining 34% on that 66% number, you get 12 or 13% that are uh, mobile phone only, okay? So the question really be, that I'm really leading to is we're a couple of years away before there's anything meaningful coming out on 5G. Correct. You know, Verizon and a couple of, uh, and AT&T are gonna start with that this year, there will be more uh, phones released in that format in a couple of years, but it's three or four years before there's anything, a meaningful audience. So the question comes down to what does 5G mean to what you're talking about on mm -hmm. ATSC? Because I think there's going to be a time when in my, I'm going to get rid of my, I won't say the name of the cable company where I get my broadband, I'll get rid of that modem and router and either it's going to either there's going to be a Wi-Fi, a 5G related uh, modem and uh, router that I'm going to have in my house, or each of us in the household is going to have his or her own phone transmitting to my TV and everything else. So what is bottom line is what does 5G mean in everything okay. that you two have been yeah. talking about? And it's been a great discussion, by it's the way. It's a great question, and so. And so uh, some really smart people who designed uh, the, the file structure for 3.0 designed it to be very LTE-like. In fact, it's, it is LTE. And so it's not an either-or situation for 5G or for even today Sprint is delivering 128 megabits in like 4G+, plus, right? So it's, it, it, when you get down to the, <clears throat> to the file structure of 3.0, it is purposely built to integrate with 5G, 4G, yeah. 3G. And, and then even further, there is an aspect of, of uh, ATSC 3.0, it's called hybrid. So for instance, I can deliver a 720p signal over the air, and I can deliver the bits over the internet 
whether it's cable modem, 5G, whatever, to make that 720p signal a UHD signal with HDR, extended color gamut, and so and marry them up at the chip. I think that's correct, right, Fred? Fred's shaking his head for a bomb gunner. I don't want to misspeak here because now we're really down on the weeds, but that then can be displayed as a premium UHD channel. So it conserves our bandwidth. It, it allows some other provider to deliver a premium channel that we could participate in. It's, it, it's a really good question, and, and I don't believe we see 5G as so much a threat as it is another delivery system yeah. that we can work with. Another enabler. No, no, I understand, but that's a very good question because we get that a lot, and, and, and the people who worked on that file structure under, understand much better than I do the 5G system, and it's meant to, meant to be work together. Yeah. And, and then the next question you should ask is, well, if I'm Verizon, I'm going to deliver your, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be in competition with us. And, and what I'll say to you is that local content, yeah. I, I'm not sure that Google or Verizon, and I don't mean to offend anybody from that, those companies, but we're a local business. We are Channel 3 in Las Vegas with the Wagners in the morning, and, 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 and that's what we do. And I don't know that, I think there's a special place for that in local communities. And, and as long as we keep delivering on that promise, I think we're okay. And, and it's very, very difficult, Verizon, with all the money they have, to get into that local business. And think about it this way, serve those local advertisers. Right. Not everybody's Procter & Gamble. Right, right, right. And that still is a very robust business. Another question. Otherwise, we could keep going on that one for a long time. Right. Um, excellent discussion. Thanks to both of you. Uh, the standard that you're discussing is, is not just going to apply here. There are broadcasters from all over the world. We're mm -hmm. just down the road in the Caribbean. One of the big questions that we have been debating with respect to ATSE 3.0, are there significant business differences that are possible? And are there significant technical differences if ATSE 3.0 is used on the UHF band versus the VHF band. Correct. Uh, there's like three really good questions in there. Yeah, I was going to say. So the first question, uh, the last thing you brought up, I'll address first, VHF versus UHF. And that's a matter of physics and, and size of antennas. So, so VHF for portable, so for, for this, if you wanted to have a chip in here and you're on channel two, you know, that's why you need, you're going to need an antenna this, you know, this long, or negative gain. Then you need more power. Uh, UHF is, 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 I think as every, everyone understands, is beachfront property because, because of its, its spectral characteristics and the size of antenna. And so I would say if, if you're UHF, I would, I, would stay with, I would stick with UHF service if you can. If you're VHF, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you're out of the game. It just means you have to be able to, um, you have to be able to uh, come up with enough power to overcome the, the, the negative gain of an antenna. But the second part of your question is, um, Comparing ATSC 3.0 to say DVB-T2, I, I think 3.0, if, if, if I could be so bold, 3.0 is a more modern standard. It's not taking another, an older standard and bolting something onto it. And, and, and again, I think that goes to the file structure. So, so the file structure designed into 3.0 is more modern and I don't, I don't want to throw darts at, at other systems, but, but I think 3.0 is more extensible and more modern 
in terms of its applicability to the future. And we'd love to have a discussion with you because, you know, we're, you know, we, we, um, we did a demonstration for the Korean broadcasters four years ago, Mike, was it three, four years ago? And they were heading down that road and they, they switched to 3.0. Um, I, th I think that's fair to say. And lots of other countries are now looking at 3.0 because of its, again, the, the robustness of the file structure, the interoperability, the, it's, it, 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 you know, there, there are lots of features to answer your question. Did I answer everything? Well, and then the business side. I want to jump in on oh, the, yeah, business the business side, side. because the, bis <laughs> the business, yeah, the business side. side. Um, the money side. I think one of the most interesting things from Imagine's perspective on ATSC 3.0 is, is, as we've discussed, it really is a transformation to a digital video audio data business, right. right? And so that means now I can sell so many different ways. I can aggregate services in different ways. And I can actually be much more competitive um, with what might be where other people are spending money on Google, right? And YouTube, or frankly, even be able to provide new, almost private audience-based services to local advertisers. Yeah, you know, I want to address one thing. You're from the, I'm sorry, you, Caribbean. gentlemen, you're from the Caribbean, right? Yes, I'm from Jamaica. Right, so, so we, have a, a, we have a partner we're working with called Guyan. Mm -hmm. It's an Indian company. They actually have the contract in India for tsunami warnings. And so one of the, and we didn't even talk about this, but the, one of the really key features about ATSC 3.0 is you can address, and what, what they do in India is they can address, they can, they can say, for this island, you're going to get 80 mile an hour winds and, and you need to go to higher ground, mm -hmm. right? So the warning, the AWARN, or, or, or the, the, uh, the ability of ATSC 3.0 to actually talk to every individual device and be able to warn you about what's happening in, in weather. I think it's an important feature that a lot of governments would, would, uh, would like to have, and even in the US. And that's one of the, one of the things when, um, uh, you know, when my boss w runs around the country, he talks to governors and uh, there was, there was a flooding incident, I think, in Oklahoma, maybe last year, and, and he asked the governor, he said, if, if you could have picked up the phone or picked yep. up your computer and said, everybody in this area, move to higher ground right now. And we don't have that ability in the U.S. We don't. And so, you know, in the Caribbean, I would suspect that's pretty darn important. And so those are the kind of adjunct features that, that, that we don't talk about a lot. No, no. Well, and, and, and by the way, you let's can be real, it was about too. talking money, right? We can Not sponsor talking about some of the, <laughs> some of the, but, it, but you're right. It's very important because I think that's one of the reasons why the local aspect that's right. of broadcasting is so important. I think we've got time for one more question. If we have one more question. No questions. No, I think that's great. So, Dell, I cannot thank you enough. Okay, great. We could we could be up here for hours. I think you yeah. both, uh, <laughs> everyone can see. We enjoy talking about this, but we also enjoy bantering and talking together. It's, so, thanks you know, for the time. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, you guys have been at the forefront, but this was a really important aspect. And I think that as as all of us who come from technology backgrounds right. um, are seeing. ATSC 3.0, like many other transformations in our industry, are now truly mashups between oh, yeah. making money and technology enablement. So thank you. If everyone can say thanks to Dell, thank thanks you. for time. Thank, thank you, you for Sarah. listening. It's always a pleasure. And, Anytime. and have a great rest of the show.